Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to an episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 53 today for the Qatar Grand Prix in Season 3. If you guys did miss the previous one, then be sure to go check the one out before you see this one at the Japanese Grand Prix. There were Ferraris flying. Our team was flying at the start as Verstappen off pole had a shocker and it was a 1-2 for the team until absolute misery. I'm still thinking about this horrendous just brake check, breaking at the 100 meter board there into turn one, breaking our front wing. We had to recover. We did recover as high as we could, but in the end, it was down to our teammate, Pierre Gasly, to take victory in Japan. His second one for the team, for the season as well, for him individually, and he actually gets ahead of us in the Drivers' Championship. I think the biggest kind of confirmation that we are not in the Drivers' title fight, because I never thought Gasly was, and the fact he's ahead of us now both of us are just looking to score well because we are still in the fight in the Constructors' Championship. It's Verstappen v Piastri, and uh, Verstappen got back ahead a little bit. A couple of more points with his third place, and Piastri just couldn't manage to overtake him the entire race around Suzuka for that P4. But now we come to three very different circuits, Qatar, Jeddah, and then Abu Dhabi. And, you know, in real life, you know, McLaren have been very good at these circuits, uh, especially Qatar as recently with Piastri. So we'll see how it goes. But into this race, weekend we have confirmation of the R&D regulation change and as I was kind of hoping to keep in line with our whole story of building a new engine for 2026 uh, for, for next season it is going to be a powertrain and durability reset so all the upgrades are, are, are potentially under threat on the engine side of things and durability and this makes things quite tricky because we obviously want to put in the last couple of thousand R&D points for our actual engine build the one we're making from scratch for season four. But then at the same time, we've also still got to do and try and adapt as many of these actual in-game powertrain upgrades because that will kind of add on to where our our own power unit is, if you know what I mean. You know, building our own engine, that's like the baseline of where the engine will be. And then on top of that, you've got all these upgrades. So we need to, well, hope that we can earn as many R&D points as possible to adapt these parts and still put in all the extra R&D for our engine build. It's good. I think we're going to leave it. I think I'll leave it to Abu Dhabi to make those purchases to decide where I'm putting those R&D points because there's no point trying to guess it now at how many we're going to be. But going into this race weekend, in terms of the R&D chart, Mercedes bringing some good upgrades. Alpine as well. Ourselves and Aston Martin and Ferrari plateauing a little bit and it's still as close as ever between McLaren and Red Bull. And, and something I haven't mentioned actually so far in these last few episodes Episodes and a few of you have been saying in the comments, look at the bottom there. Haas, Sauber, and Alpha Tauri, they've plateaued. They've not made a single upgrade for about what, seven races? So depending on how they play the regulation change, depending on what their aero and chassis is looking like, and how they upgrade over the winter potentially are we on for like a surprise like underdog story in season four where one of those teams makes some unbelievable rate of upgrading because that's a lot of a lot of races a lot of r&d to save up so keep an eye on that but we come into qatar then obviously a big one for piastri having lost a few points at the japanese grand prix you know in real life this was a great grand prix from mclaren and piastri so they'll be hoping that they can try and kind of stop the hide the momentum that Verstappen has and that is actually occurring in Q1 at least with Piastri P1 and the Red Bull's not looking uh, not looking as quick Verstappen down in P4 rather than his staple you know being right up there and actually being quicker than the two McLarens and then for obviously for us away from the title fight from them two for us we just need myself and Gassi to score well again Clearly the ultimate break upgrade last episode was working wonders. It's transformed this car, especially for Pierre Gasly. But also I'm finding here in Qatar a little bit more speed over one lap. And we're a bit closer to Gasly than we were in Suzuka as we go into Q3. Then in P4 and 6. Mercedes though, look a bit quick there. Russell P1. Obviously they brought the biggest upgrades this race weekend out of everyone in the top flight. So they might be a bit of a spanner in the works. Who knows? Him and Mick Schumacher. But now all eyes on this top 10 shootout this is where it really matters and at the moment Schumacher 
going quickest of all, but all of us on our first flying lap. So I suspect a lot of people will be going purple. There goes Valtteri Bottas. So it's going to be swapping and changing all the time. But as we come towards the finish line, it's going to be P2 for us. And Gasly at the moment is on provisional pole. It could be a provisional 1-2 right now as we start our second flying lap. We're actually at the end of it now. We've gone purple in the first sector, green in the second. But you can see on the, on the top right, we've only made a tiny, tiny marginal gain. It's still going to be a gain of sorts, but not enough to go any higher. But we are going to finish with a 1-2 front row lockout for the sprint, for the sprint at Qatar. So we still need to convert this into a grid slot for Sunday's Grand Prix. Verstappen and Piastri, though, three and four. So once again, just all the people involved in the title fight, no shock horror, we're all right at the top in the top four places. So this is big for our team. If we can convert this well in the sprint and in the full race, we, we well, like I said last episode, we well could be ahead of McLaren going into the final two races uh, of the season. And for Verstappen, Piastri, this is an important one. They're alongside each other. Verstappen got the better of Piastri last time in Suzuka. Can Piastri get the jump on Verstappen this time? I guess we're going to find out very soon as we're going to go towards those lights for the sprint race on Saturday. There's some points on offer, but more importantly, this sets up tomorrow's Sunday Grand Prix. So let's make it a good one if you go to lights out. And we're underway. It's a bit of a slow one for our teammate Gasly. It's an even slower one for Max Verstappen. Look at the top left. Look at the ladder. Verstappen from uh, what was P3 down to P7. And he started on softs. The rest of us, most of us, on the medium compound attire. Verstappen on the soft compound has a howler of a getaway. He's lower than his teammate down in P8. This could be a good race for Piastri. As George Russell manages to send it to the inside. He's had an electric start. He overtook our teammate already. And now he's sent it on the inside of us. We're side by side now through the next left-hander. But this safety car is out. An early one at that. A surprise one. And annoyingly, because Russell was just ahead of us, he's going to uh, maintain the P1 under under this safety car. Don't actually know what this safety car was for. I've looked back through all the replays. No one broke a front wing, so I'm not too sure. There was maybe a car going slow. All I know is, under the safety car, it's absolute pain and misery for Valtteri Bottas as he suffers a mechanical failure. It's adulation for us, for Red Bull maybe as well because this means Bottas, it won't mean too much for the sprint points, but for tomorrow's race then, Bottas will be starting stone dead last. So it's going to be one McLaren versus both myself and Gasly, knock on wood, and you know maybe both Red Bull cars fighting for the big points on Sunday's Grand Prix. So that could be huge for the Constructors fight. But we now got going again. Russell, like he did in real life, actually, to Piastri, he kind of got me, uh, caught me napping a little bit as he went a bit early. But by the end of this straight, using plenty of battery, we're still going to have a good go at him at turn one. We went from right to left to try and go to the outside. Didn't really work out for us because I hit a wall of marbles off the racing line. So Russell maintains first place. We're second. Gasly third. Piastri P4. Shoot. Schumacher has overtaken uh, a couple of people up to P5. And we've got another safety car. Another one. Two in four laps. So Qatar... Uh, really uh, ending up being a very chaotic one here. It's only the sprint as well as, uh, oh, poor chair spins it. Oh, no. And he's crashed into his own teammate. The two Williams come together. Two Sauber's caught up in that. But, uh, okay, that, that's definitely why that was a safety car. I still don't know what the first one was about. But either way, so this sprint race is becoming even more of a sprint. As by the time we get going, it'll be on towards lap seven. So we'll have, like, what, three racing laps to go in this one. This time, trying to stick behind Russell as closely as we can to not get jumped like we did last time out. And uh, hopefully looking to try and make that move for P1, which will set us for pole position in the full race tomorrow. Here we go. We've uh, waltzed past him, but we get a legal overtake because we overtook him just before the start-finish line. And so we have to let him by at some point. Ironically, we were too quick off the final corner. So I let off throttle here to try and let him go, get back on throttle. But the momentum is there with Gasly. And all of a sudden, our teammate has managed just to smash and grab us to get up into P2. We're down to third. So that's a nightmare. I thought that was a good corner to let Russell by because it's quite a quick corner. So I can get back on throttle. But actually, because it was a quick corner, Gasly was carrying so much momentum through. And even though I got on power quite 
early. He just, you know, just flew by it. So he's now the one having a go at Russell, potentially. Piastri is now having a go at me because we are a bit woeful off that final corner. We've actually used too much battery over the lap, so he stopped deploying it halfway down the straight. And now the McLaren is looking to try and overtake us. We're going to give Piastri a good old fight and get back into third place then and try and keep up with Gasly if we can. But I feel like now, with only two laps to go, Gasly is going to be the main man to have a go at Russell to try and get that P1. Is he going to go to the inside? I think he is. Russell leaves the door open, really. And those two are going to be side by side, making a little bit of contact there. And uh, we've now caught back up to him. But it's a bit awkward because they're doing so well to keep it side by side with each other. I don't know where to go. Do I go right? Do I go left? At the moment, I'm just going to kind of let off and kind of let them fight it amongst themselves and see if we can pick off Russell because ideally, you know, we, we're going to get convert this into a 1-2. So I don't want to kind of get in the middle of Gasly and what he's doing and ruin his race. So... I'm waiting for him to, you know, maybe get the elbow out on Russell. But those two are so equally matched that it's been, what, nearly two sectors now. And they're still going side by side through all these winding high-speed corners. Piastri has caught up to us, so we need to be wary about that. So he slammed the door shut on the left there. Gasly is finally finally up into P1 and in towards the last half of the Grand Prix. Can we make the move ourselves on the Mercedes to make it a 1-2 once again in the sprint and for the grid uh, in tomorrow's race? Russell is looking a little bit vulnerable through these last corners. He goes defensive, leaves us the room on the outside for the final bend. It's going to be a very tricky one to keep it round, but foot firmly flat to the floor on the throttle pedal. DRS also available to both of us though, so it's a drag race and I'm trying to not overuse the battery to make sure we have enough for the rest of the lap. Oh, ooh, Russell, Russell, what are you doing there, mate? He swipes across us. Our fellow compatriot being very aggressive here. We're going to, you know, pay him the same favor and squeeze him right out. And that's actually going to get Piastri up to third place. But that's, that's just karma for nearly crashing into me into turn one, I feel. And so we've got this one, two delivered but is there a final twist in the tail because Piastri is looking so quick even though I'm deploying battery all the way through Piastri center he's cut the corner and he's nearly now actually broken our front wing because he cuts right across us and now all of a sudden we're behind Russell Piastri knows that he needs to get the maximum from this race weekend and so he's got desperate there cutting the corner to get to P2 the FI have said nothing about it and meanwhile the two Mercs, they've come together. Russell has crashed into Schumacher, and Schumacher's broken his front wing. Absolutely shocking scenes here on the last half of the sprint. It was just literally not a care in the world. Just send it. And, well, the FI have thought nothing of it. So Piastri does, in fact, get second place. Verstappen finishes up in P6. So this is big for Piastri. He's already got seven points to Verstappen's three there. So that kind of counteracts the points he lost in Japan. And he's now seven points behind Verstappen. And starting on the front row for tomorrow's Grand Prix could be a big one. So, yeah, I mean, I can understand why he was desperately sending it to the inside of me. But obviously for ourselves, well, look at this. We're one point behind McLaren now. So, you know... There may be a fight on between Piastri and Verstappen, but honestly, I'm very excited about what me and Gasly can do in the full Grand Prix because we just outscore... Well, actually, you know, we just do well enough because Bottas is the last place. We could be overtaking McLaren by the end of this episode, which would be amazing for the constructors. Let's go to the grid for the full Grand Prix. We're under the lights once again here in Qatar. Last year, we took a year off due to a small footballing tournament that was being hosted, but it's all excitement on the track now. So we're back here in La Salle, and this is the track map. 3.34 miles, 16 turns, and just one DRS zone out of turn 16. It's already a fast and flowing track after all. There's a good overtaking opportunity with DRS, though, through the long straight and into turn one. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. A fantastic effort from Pierre Gasly yesterday puts him on pole position, and Oscar Piastri completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have the owner driver, Russell, Norris, Ocon, Sainz, Leclerc, Ricardo, Albon, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Perez, Magnussen, Verstappen, the owner-driver, 
Stroll, Holkenberg, Mick Schumacher, Sargent, Liam Lawson, and Valtteri Bottas begins the race from the back of the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you with us here, but I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. So he did a decent enough job then in the sprint race. At least Gasly did a mega job to still convert that P1 up to a P1 here for the full Grand Prix on Sunday here in Qatar. Piastri, obviously for himself, did very well to get into second place. And Verstappen, um, well, he's got it. He's up against it in, in this race. And this is a big, big chance for Piastri to retake the lead of this championship. And it's a big opportunity, like I said, for myself and Gasly to work as a good team and maybe overtake McLaren for the constructors' battle. Uh, all of us eager to get to the grid slots, ghosting inside of each other there. But uh, uh, you can see the tyre uh, differences and choices. So I've chosen the mediums. A lot of these guys around me, at least Gasly and Piastri right ahead of me, they've chosen softs. So they're, they're, they're going for an aggressive strategy, whether that's a two-stop or a one-stop, who knows? We've seen multiple times on this game, okay, Qatar's tyre wear is like so high, like in real life, just in the game. So maybe they're going for the early commitment to the okay, two-stop, whereas I'm leaving the, the door patience. open for maybe that audacious one-stop that we've seen Carlos Sainz pull off twice in this series so far. Either way, we go to five red lights for the Qatar Grand Prix. It's a slow one for the pole sitter, Gasly. Off the line so poorly, but it's a huge one for Piastri in his championship fight because he's up into P1 now. Russell into second again, starts off quick. Carlos Sainz has had a rapid one. We just mentioned him. He, he seems to, his AI seems to love Qatar for some reason. And Verstappen, what the? He's down in P4. What's happened there? What is that? His championship is unraveling with three races to go uh, and Leclerc trying to overtake Lando Norris. So it's just not a great day for Red Bull as a whole. But this is the replay then. Just oh, just such a smooth, smooth getaway. That was a pin perfect start for Oscar Piastri. A slow one for our teammate Gasly. And you can see there I, I, I veered off to the left because I didn't want to make any contact with Gasly and inadvertently made my racing line not too great. And this is the replay from Verstappen. So he's actually started down in P15. Um, so that means he's got a grid penalty because he, he finished in the sprint P5, I think. So he's got a 10 place grid penalty. So that's why he's so low. So it's not a total disaster. And Red Bull maybe are confident in him making overtakes, recovering in this race. But it's an interesting race to choose to take an engine penalty out of all the tracks we've got left. Qatar, Jeddah, Abu Dhabi. I feel like Qatar is probably the worst one to take a set of penalties, but they're committed to that choice now. We'll see how it goes through this Grand Prix, but back to the live action on lap six, on to seven. Gasly right on the back of Russell. A quick start to the Mercedes, but now the pace is coming through of Pierre Gasly on the outside. This is reminding me of the battle they had in the sprint race. This time it's Gasly on the inside, but I think Gasly learnt from the sprint race. He literally wasted no time at all getting that move booked in he's up into second place but look at the gap Piastri has he's looking really comfortable in clean air around Qatar and this is what exactly what he needs for the championship whilst Verstappen I think is only now up to P11 at this stage of the race so things are looking very good in his world but we close up to Russell and obviously lap seven right about now surely the softs are wearing out so that's why I've closed up quite well and kept up with them because now my mediums should be the better race tyre. And the same for Verstappen, actually. He started on medium, so he actually ha ha should have some good pace versus any soft tyre runners in between ourselves and him uh, in P10. And uh, I'm hoping we can make a move on Russell ASAP. And to be honest, I think we could probably overtake Gasly as well. As much as he's done well to get Russell himself, I think we can get both of them. And then we'll see what we can do in clean air 
with the better medium tyre at this stage versus the softs, could we close up to Piastri and try and ruin the party a little bit for him and McLaren? Obviously, we've got our own individual aspirations in this race to try and maximise the points for the constructors to be easily, easily overtake Russell then on the outside of the final corner, closing up to Gasly. Just can't quite make the move here on lap eight. But at the end of lap nine, on to 10, almost kind of pushing Gasly through the entry and then the exit of the final corner. I think this is going to be a slam dunk overtake. Meanwhile, Piastri extends his lead 3.2 seconds up the road. But now in clean air, we've already brought the gap under three seconds just with that main straight. So we've clearly got some good straight line speed, actually, and just general good pace in the first sector. It's the second sector where I lose a little bit, I think, to the cars around me. But can we close up? We have closed up to two seconds, but lap 12... Piastri pits and I'm going to pit because I've looked at the tyre wear and I've decided no, we're not going to try an audacious one stop even though I, I definitely could have because I'm on the medium so I could have gone probably three laps longer in this race but I'm going to cover off Piastri because I'm committed to the two stop. I think yes, some of the AI I have ended up winning the Qatar GP doing a one stop but I think the pace that we're all going at I think we're just going to wreck the tyres, even on hard. So we've committed. I think I'm going to do a two-stop. I don't know about the others. Because honestly, these AI, I think they could still try and do a one-stop, even though they've gone soft to mediums. But I'm committing to a two-stop here. So we're on to the hards. We know how good this car is on the hard compound. So I'm hoping we can close up to Piastri. Meanwhile, Max Verstappen... Lap 14, two laps later, he is one of two cars yet to pit in the top 10. And those two cars are the two Red Bulls. They're both on mediums, uh, having started on those tyres, and they're still going. So clearly, Red Bull have seen that they don't have as much pace here around Qatar. Verstappen had the grip penalty. So the, the way they're going to try and maybe counteract this and get ahead of Piastri, get ahead of ourselves is maybe trying that one stop, you've got to, got to say, because they're the only two cars still going on lap 14. But uh, you can see Piastri is only, well, a half a second behind Lando at this point now uh, in P3. So he's rapidly catching him. Oh, we're catching him. And so in the middle of lap 14, here we go. Piastri right up the rear wing of that Red Bull. But it's almost like Lando's trying to block Piastri, help his teammate Verstappen out here in the final corner. Look how much time we're losing now because we've actually caught up and I've got to do the same there's no you know good way to kind of force a move here so we're losing you know a good second or so here in this last sector alone to Verstappen as uh, Lando keeps a very awkward racing line Piastri sends it to the inside of the final corner we're going to come through because obviously Lando's tyres are now absolutely done on those mediums and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to pit on this next lap, lap 15 or lap 16, but Verstappen is 9.6 seconds ahead. That's quite a big gap uh, to, you know, leave out in terms of the one stop, you know, because obviously we're making one more stop in this race. Verstappen's going to make one more stop in this race. So 9.6 seconds, that could, you know, that could be the difference of actually pulling off this one stop with that higher tyre wear. And two laps later, Verstappen has made that, I assume, one and only pit stop of this Grand Prix onto the hard compound. Piastri's now back in P1, we're P2. The gap is 2.4 though. We've kind of stopped closing in on him and he's actually pulling away. And as we go on through this middle stint, by lap 23, six laps later, Piastri has grown that gap from 2.4 to 6.7 and he's on mediums that should be more worn at this stage than my hards so Piastri just like in real life really good around Qatar and he's not messing about he wants to get those points get that lead of the championship back over Verstappen I've tried my best but I just don't have that much pace actually and Gasly he's also chosen the hard tyres but he's actually behind Carlos Sainz now on the Ferraris out of nowhere has overtaken him and Sainz is on mediums uh, there is Verstappen on hards in P7, so he's actually recovering quite well, Verstappen here. P7 on hards, having pit many laps later than most of us. He could actually legitimately actually make this one-stop work, potentially, and that could be very interesting uh, on the last couple of laps if the rest of us are doing two stops. This is, this is assuming that Piastri is even doing a two-stop. The rest of them are doing a two-stop. I'm definitely doing one because we come, we're come. we coming in lap 23. The gap was, what, seven seconds. I was not gaining anything on Oscar. And looking at previous Qatar Grand Prix, I think if you go earlier on the softs, 
you gain a lot. So we're committing to this two-stop. And for once, these hard tyres, they just weren't that great. Once they started wearing out, yeah, I really couldn't keep up with Oscar on the medium. So I think we're going to find a lot more pace on the softs. And I've just got to hope that that same high tyre wear is going to come back to bite the AI as it has done in previous seasons of this series because we come out in P11 outside the points but just behind Fernando Alonso here and uh, you're going to see the difference in pace here because we go round the outside of him at this left hander plant the power these softs they're new softs also by the way because we had a set saved from not using them in the sprint they're going to be mighty quick as we close up now to Daniel Ricciardo in the Alpine onto lap 25 DRS open two purples not quite the fastest lap just yet, but I think we will nick the fastest lap this time round on lap 25 onto 26. Leclerc is in. So now you can see a few of these cars around us are also seeing what I'm doing, seeing the pace I've got. And they think, yep, it's time to pit ourselves. Leclerc's in. Sainz is in. Surprisingly, Russell's in. I say surprisingly because Sainz was always one of the people that tried a one-stop, but even he's bailing out of it. Russell's come in. So we're up into P6 now. Schumacher carries on on the mediums uh, but look how slow you can even he physically looks slow through these corners and so here we are then we're going to try and fake it to the right go to the left and send him the dummy and go round the outside to get up into p5 meanwhile just ahead of us esteban ocon in p4 verstappen is actually right up behind gasly just showing actually for some reason our car this race on hards not that great because Gasly's fallen away through this stint and Verstappen's closed that gap on the same set of tyres. So for whatever reason, our My Team car, not too great on the hards this time around. So Verstappen's right behind Gasly and Piastri is going to come in. A little bit late maybe, lap 26, but he is going to come in. He is doing the two-stop. Will Gasly and or Verstappen do that as well? Either way, one of the championship protagonists is in for that late two-stop. I imagine onto soft compound attire. Gasly is in. So our teammate in. But Verstappen isn't. I was correct. Verstappen and Red Bull are going to try and pull off the one-stop. And realistically, this is the only way they're beating Piastri today and maintaining the lead of the championship. So Verstappen now takes the lead of this Grand Prix. At the start of the race, he was P14, so he's done very well. Three laps to go. We're into second place, by the way. Schumacher third, uh, but he's still going on those mediums. Piastri, P4. But you know what? Piastri's on brand spanking new softs. I'm on... Uh, my softs have still got a good pace, but uh, you're going to see the tyre wear is going to be a little bit high as Piastri makes a move on a lapped car of uh, Alfa Tauri and now is going to close up towards uh, Schumacher. And, and he's uh, Piastri's going to have the bit between his teeth. So although I am closing up on the Snapping. I think we're going to see Piastri rapidly close up on me. I'll try my best to defend him, but look at this. He's already overtaken Schumacher. He's taken two cars in basically one and a half sectors. And look how quick he's going through these corners. He is a man on a mission. He is not going to let Verstappen get this one after all of this. Lap 28, I've closed up one second to Verstappen. But I've got all of a sudden Piastri right up my gearbox. My front tyres are really cool now they're like 25% tire wear and Piastri goes for the undercut on the left hand side and we're going to try and fight it as much as we can but he just has way too much pace mid corner I've tried to fight it it would have been nice to try and get the P1 for ourselves here in Qatar but I think we've got to admit Piastri in a world of his own around this circuit mega pace he's overtaken us in sector 3 and he's going to be immediately on the back of Verstappen but this is brilliant the top two in the championship fighting each other going on to the last couple of laps here in Qatar and Piastri well Verstappen doesn't put up much of a fight to be honest I'm very surprised by that I thought he would have put up way bigger of a fight but I think he knew how bad his tyres were and there was no way he could even fight that I mean Piastri's three seconds now down the road and this is on the same last lap where he overtook Verstappen just showing how incredible 
that pace is from the Australian. So he comes through the final corners. He's going to take the win. Can we maybe inadvertently help him out here? Because I want to get P2. I'm thinking about our Constructors' Championship. We tried to go for the dive down the inside. It hasn't worked. Verstappen's quite good off the exit. But we have DRS. And it's a drag race to the line. And just before the finish line, we'll bag the P2. That, it will help Piastri out. But I'm not even thinking about that. I'm thinking about the, the Constructors. That's three more points in the Constructors. And you know what? That's going to pay big because I think right now we're level on points with McLaren. It was a tough race at times, but they've held on to take a great victory for McLaren today. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalize on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Our winning drivers are on their way to the podium right now. It's been a fantastic race for McLaren, that's for sure. And no doubt, they'll be celebrating tonight. It's a massive win for Oscar Piastri. All the momentum has been with Verstappen the last three episodes, the last three races. You know, wins, podiums. Uh, but this is what the Australian needed, just to stop that momentum going to the final two races. And I think with that also, might take the lead of the championship. So that will also be, maybe be a better position for him to be in. Um, and then for ourselves, though, that was a big P2 for us. Unfortunately, Gasly just really fell away, even on the softs at the end of the race. Didn't make up much ground, I don't think, as we come to the race results. Uh, yeah, Gasly P5. So he did get ahead of the two Ferraris, at least, in, in the end of it, I think. Uh, or no, he didn't. No, because those are the, spri the sprint points added up. So overall, Gasly still scores well. But I think in the race, oh, he actually finished behind Carlos Sainz. But for us, getting those three extra points over Verstappen is big. Because, well, for Piastri, he's now three points ahead of Verstappen. They would have been level on points if they actually finished one, two like that, respectively. But that's not what I care about. What I care about is the next table. We are level on points with McLaren. So this feels a lot more achievable. Two rounds to go. If me and Gasly just keep up this relentless consistency of being the two teammates up there whilst, you know, it's only Oscar up there for McLaren, only Max up there for Red Bull, I think we can truly, we can definitely, definitely get this uh, Constructors title. And then obviously for the drivers, well, we'll just sit back and enjoy the title fight with a bucket of popcorn because uh, I think it's going to be a blockbuster ending with Piastri and Verstappen firing on all cylinders. But guys, if you have enjoyed this one, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.